chapter three review. Let's go ahead and dive in and see what chapter three was all about. The first thing I want you to do is find the product to these three multiplication problems. Go ahead and solve for 60 times 20, 80 times 70, and 15 times 30. Don't forget your zeros. If we're solving 60 times 20, the first thing we're going to do is cross out those zeros, place them down in our product. 6 times 2 is 12, so our product is 1,200. Next up, we have 80 times 70. We're going to cross out our zeros, place them in our product. 8 times 7 is 56, so our product is 5,600. Our last problem is 15 times 30. Some of you may have been able to solve this problem in your head. If you had to work it out, you could have worked it out a number of different ways. If you were using regrouping, we talked about the importance of putting that number with the zero on the bottom. This just gives you less work because all you have to do is cross that zero out, place it down, and then do your multiplication of 3 times 5, which would give you 15. You'd carry, and then you would multiply 3 times 1, which would give you 3 plus 1 more would be 4, and you would get a product of 450. If you were solving using the area model, you wouldn't split your rectangle into four pieces. You would only need to split it into three. You would have 30 on one side, and then you would have 10 and 5, and you would solve for each of those partial products. And then you would add your partial products of 300 plus 150, which would give you a total product of 450. So either way you solve it, you get the same product of 450. Let's take a look at our next problems. Here we're estimating the product, and we need to remember our two steps when we're estimating our product. Our first step is to round our numbers, and then our second step is to then multiply what we rounded. So go ahead and round and multiply these next problems. We're going to start with 67 times 34. I'm going to go ahead and round 67, and that would round up to 70. 34 would round down to 30, so my multiplication problem would be 70 times 30 to find my estimate. I would cross my zeros out, place them in my product. 7 times 3 is 21, so my estimate would be 2,100. My next problem is 83 times 26. I'm going to go ahead and round first. 83 would round to 80, and 26 would round up to 30, so I would multiply 83 times 30. I'm going to cross my zeros out, place them in my product. 8 times 3 is 24, so my product is 2,400. My last problem is 75 times 42. I'm going to go ahead and round. 75 would round up to 80, and 42 would round down to 40. So I'm going to multiply 80 times 40 to find my estimate. I cross my two zeros out, place them in my product, and then I have 8 times 4, which is 32. So my estimate is 3,200. All right, so when we're estimating, make sure we're rounding and then we're multiplying. And it's always important to estimate our product before we multiply to make sure that our product is in the right range and we didn't forget a step. Let's move on to our next skill we learned in this chapter. We multiplied using the area model. Here we have 53 times 37. I want you to multiply using the area model. The first thing I want you to do, though, is estimate the product. So go ahead and estimate the product and then set up your area model. If we were estimating the product, 53 would be rounded to 50, and 37 would be rounded to 40. So I would multiply 50 times 40 to find my estimate. Cross those zeros out, place them in my product. 5 times 4 is 20, so my estimate would be 2,000. Then I'm going to set up my area model. Go ahead and solve 53 times 37 and make sure you get a product that's around 2,000. So here's my area model. I'm going to go ahead and multiply to find my partial product. So here I get 1,500. Over here, I get a partial product of 90. I have 350 here and then 21. I'm going to go ahead and add down to find, to make my addition not as complicated. Instead of adding four numbers, I'm only going to add two at a time. Then I'm going to add 1,850 plus 111, and I'm going to get my final product of 1,961, which is very close to my estimate of 2,000, so I can be pretty confident in that answer. 
Even if I'm pretty confident in my answer, it's always a good idea for me to check using a different method. Right here, we're just focusing on area model though, so we're not going to go ahead and check. All right, next one I want you to solve is 76 times 51. First thing I want you to do is estimate the product. Our estimate here, we would round 76 to 80, and then we would round 51 to 50. So we would multiply 80 times 50, and when we do that, we put our two zeros down, 8 times 5 is 40. So my estimate is 4,000. I'm now going to go ahead and use partial products to solve. Solve for 76 times 51 using partial products. So here I have my problem set up to solve for partial products. I'm going to go ahead and multiply each piece to find my partial product, and I'm going to make sure that I'm lining up my place values. We talked about how important it is to line up your place values, so you don't have to do extra work. If we don't line up our place values, then we have to rewrite all of these numbers and then add them. But if we do line up our place values, then we don't have to rewrite anything when we go ahead and add. Everything is already all lined up for us. My final product is 3,876 when I add down. So 76 times 51 equals 3,876 as my final product, and it's quite close to my estimate, which is always good. All right, let's go ahead and solve this next problem using regrouping. The first thing I want you to do, though, is estimate your product. So estimate your product now. I would round 86 up to 90 and 35 down up to 40, and I would be multiplying 90 times 40. I'm going to cross my zeros out, place them over here, and 9 times 4 is 36. So my estimate is 3,600. Now I'm going to go ahead and multiply 86 times 35 using regrouping. Please note that because we rounded both of these numbers up pretty significantly, our estimate should, or our actual product should be quite a bit lower than our estimate. Go ahead and multiply 86 times 35 using the regrouping method now. I'm going to start by multiplying my 1's place times my 1's place. 6 times 5 is 30. I put my 0, carry my 3. Then I'm going to multiply my 1's place times my 10's place. So 8 times 5 is 40, plus 3 more gives me 43. I'm going to move on to my 10's place. Before I do that, I'm going to place my placeholder. Now I'm going to multiply my 10's place times my 1's place, and I'm going to get 18. I put my 1's and carry my 10's. I crossed out what I had carried before. Now I'm going to multiply 3 times 8, which is 24, plus 1 more gives me 25. I'm going to go ahead and add my two pieces together, and that's going to give me my final product of 3,010, which is significantly lower than my estimate, but I can expect that because I rounded both numbers up. All right, so 86 times 35 gives me a product of 3,010. All right, next problem, 47 times 18. I want you to solve this problem using two different methods. Choose any of the methods we've talked about in class and go ahead and solve this problem using any two methods. Let's estimate first. For our estimate, we would round 47 up to 50 and 18 up to 20. So we would multiply 50 times 20 to find our estimate. And we get a product of 1,000 for our estimate. Again, we rounded 47 up and 18 up. So our actual product is going to be lower than 1,000. That's what we can expect. All right, let's go ahead and solve this problem two different ways. I'm going to use the area model and the regrouping method. You may choose any two methods you would like. Make sure that you get the same product when you multiply. I have both of my methods set up. I'm going to go ahead and start with regrouping. 8 times 7 is 56. I put my 6 and carry my 5. Then I'm going to multiply 8 times 4, which gives me 32, plus 5 more is 37. I'm going to put my placeholder down before I start multiplying my 10s. 1 times 7 is 7. And then I move on to 1 times 4, which gives me 4. And I'm going to add these two pieces together. 
and we talked about how our actual product is going to be less than our estimate, so our product is 846. I'm going to go ahead and check my work though to make sure I did everything correctly over here with my area model. This is just a great way for me to make sure that I did everything that I was supposed to do and I got the right product. I'm going to add down. Through adding those two pieces, we ended up getting the same exact two parts that we got over here with regrouping. So when I add these two pieces together, I end up with 846. So my product to 47 times 18 gives me 846. Let's take a look at some word problems. Our first word problem says Julia buys 21 bags of candy for Halloween. Each bag holds 45 pieces of candy. How many pieces of candy did she buy? Go ahead and write your equation and solve this problem. The equation for this problem that you should have set up was 21 times 45. I'm going to solve using my area model. You may have solved using partial products or regrouping and that's fine. You should get the same product. I'm going to multiply to find all of my partial products. And then I'm going to add to find those pieces and then I'm going to add those two pieces together. So here I get a product of 945. I want to check my work so I'm going to check using regrouping. I'm going to start with my ones place. One times five gives me five and one times four gives me four. Then I'm going to put my placeholder down and I'm going to multiply two times five which gives me ten, carry my one, and two times four gives me eight plus one more gives me nine. Again, these are the same pieces that I got over here with my area model. Now I'm going to add down and I get a product of 945. So it asks me how many pieces of candy did she buy? She bought 945 pieces of candy. Let's take a look at another problem. Here we have each month Joseph puts $15 into his savings account. How much money will be saved after two years? How much money will be in his savings account after two years? Go ahead and write your equation for this problem. Well, he puts $15 each month and after two years, well, they're not talking about the same thing here. We have months and years. So we need to convert this two years into months before we can solve this problem. How many months are in a year? There are 12 months in a year. In one year. So if I need two years, I'm talking about 24 months. So if I'm solving this problem, I have to multiply 15 times 24, not times 2. Be careful. Make sure you understand what the question's asking you for. Now that we have our equation, go ahead and solve this problem. I'm solving using the area model and then I'm checking my work with regrouping to make sure I get the right answer. Always a good idea for me to check my work. I'm going to get 240 from this side and 120 from this side and when I add those two pieces I get 360 as my product. I'm talking about dollars. I'm going to go over here and check with regrouping. So 5 times 4 gives me 20. I put my 0, carry my 2. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 more is 12. I'm going to put my placeholder down. I'm going to multiply 1 times 4. And that gives me 4. And then 1 times 2 gives me 2. Notice those products are the same as I have over here. Then I'm going to go ahead and add these two pieces together and I get a total of $360. So J Joseph will put $360 into his savings account after two years. All right, let's take a look at another word problem. Tanner sold 23 adult tickets and 17 child tickets to his soccer tournament. Adult tickets cost $16 each and child tickets cost $11 each. How much money did he collect for soccer tickets? Go ahead and write your equation to solve this problem. 
We're talking about adult tickets and child tickets. He has 23 adult tickets, and we need to figure out how much do each of those cost. It tells us they each cost $16. So 23 times 16 is going to tell us our adult tickets. Then we have child tickets, 17 child tickets at $11 each, so 17 times 11. I then want to know how much money did he collect for his soccer tournaments. That includes child tickets and adult tickets, so I'm going to add those two products together. 23 times 16, and then 17 times 11. Go ahead and find those products. I'm going to solve 23 times 16 using the area model, so I'm going to cross my zeros out, place them in my product, and then I get 200 there, 120, 30, and 18, and I'm going to add those pieces down, and I have 320, and then 48, and I'm going to add those two pieces together to get my final product here of 368. If I look at an estimate, I would be multiplying 20 times 20, which would get me 400, so my actual product is pretty close to that. I'm going to go ahead and multiply 17 times 11 over here, so I'm going to multiply 1 times 7, that gives me 7. 1 times 1 gives me 1. I'm going to put my placeholder down. Then I'm going to multiply 1 times 7. That gives me 7. And 1 times 1 gives me 1. I add these two pieces together. If I were to estimate this, I'd be multiplying 10 times 17 and get 170, which is quite close to what I got as my final product. Now I need to add these two pieces together to figure out how much money he collected. And I get a final answer of $555. So Tanner collected $555 from soccer tickets. Let's take a look at one last problem. Here we have the school donated 45 dozen water bottles to hurricane relief. How many water bottles were donated? Go ahead and write your equation to solve this problem. Now you might be a little stumped and think, well, how do I solve this problem? I only see one number here. Well, let's take a look at the word right next to it. It says dozen. How many are in a dozen? A dozen is equal to 12. So to solve this problem, we would write down 45 times 12. That's how we solve this problem. Go ahead and solve for 45 times 12 now to figure out how many water bottles were donated. I'm going to use my area model to multiply, and then I'm going to check my work with regrouping. So over here, 10 times 40 gives me 400. 10 times 5 is 50. 40 times 2 is 80, and 5 times 2 is 10. I'm going to add these, and I get 480 and 60. And then I'm going to add those two together to get a final product of 540. I'm going to go ahead and over here do my area model, or my regrouping model, just to make sure I am on the right track. 5 times 2 is 10, carry my 1. 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 more gives me 9. I'm then going to put my placeholder down. Then I'm going to multiply my 1 times 5, that gives me 5. And 1 times 4 gives me 4. When I add these two pieces together, I get a final product of 540, which is the same as I got using my area model. Important takeaways from this chapter are when we're multiplying and we have zeros at the end of our numbers, don't forget your zeros. Make sure you're estimating your products and then make sure you're checking your work using a different method. You know three to four methods to multiply two digit numbers times two digit numbers. Put in a little bit of extra effort and you will reap the reward of getting that problem correct. Okay, that's our review for chapter three. See you next week when we do chapter four, which is going to focus on division. Good luck on your tests.